Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing water reflection photography. Let's jump into some tips. First tip I have is you're gonna to wanna to find the biggest puddle possible, ideally after a rain. It just rained here, which is awesome, and now the sun's out, so this is like perfect conditions. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, we're going for stuff kind of like this. You're gonna to wanna to shoot it from the lowest angle possible. So you can kind of see right here, I'm able to get the building in it and the reflection here. But if I put the camera even lower, you get even more of the reflection. Next tip I have would be to shoot vertical if possible. It allows you to get more of the reflection and actual subject in your photo if possible. So let's do an example. I'm here with my friend JC, and we're gonna take a couple portrait photos right here with the reflection. What I'm experiencing here is my puddle is drying up a little bit. So real quick, we're gonna move over to that puddle because the more surface area I have, the more reflection we can get. Those would be my main tips here for shooting after a rainstorm, ideally before your puddles dry up. Real quick, before you go, I wanted to jump in and share two quick, how many times do I say quick? So, real quick, real quick, too quick. Also, you hear this bird? It's pretty loud, but whatever. Anyways, the two things. One, this is the next day. I wanted to share that after having concluded the video right there, I actually stepped like literally 10 feet to the side. I went to a road that had even better light. The only clip I got is me shooting a photo of a bus, which didn't even turn out that great. Throw it on the screen, you can see it here. But I did get my favorite photo of JC at that location. I just wanted to quickly share that, even though I don't have footage. Oops. And then I also wanted to recap my points for the video. I shared three main tips, I think it was. One, to find the biggest puddle possible. Two, to shoot from as low as possible. Three, to shoot vertical so that you can fit more into your frame. And then the fourth tip, I don't know if I explicitly said, but I did show it, is sometimes you don't need it to be perfectly symmetrical. Your subject and the reflection, sometimes you just get a little bit of the subject and a lot of the reflection. Usually that looks cooler than a lot of subjects and a little reflection. But anyways, that would be my four tips. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little on the shorter end. I like that. And it's more efficient. And this was a little more vlog style content. This is what I'm more looking to do. It's not planned out. I'm kind of just running and going with it. So let me know your thoughts. Hope this helped you guys out. Tag me in some of your photos if you do do a water reflection photography shot. That would be super fun to check out. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Do all the things. Appreciate you. Peace. Gosh, this is soaking wet. <laughs> oh well. Rip. <laughs>